Welcome to the DIY Garage. Today we're going to convert another one of these Schwinn Meridian trikes into an e-bike. Installing one of these e-bike conversion kits is actually pretty easy and really requires just a few simple tools. Now of course the more you want to get into the installation the more tools and materials you can use. In this box is the 48 volt 1000 watt front wheel conversion kit that I bought off of AliExpress from China. It took about three weeks to get here and cost about $450. I live on the island of Kauai and these trikes are very difficult to find and get here. This one I was able to get off of Craigslist for about $100. It's a little bit rusty, but she'll do. Okay, let's get this motor unboxed. First, we've got the main wheel, and this has all the other parts tied into it. They do a pretty good job of packaging everything. This kit comes with a tire, but I'm gonna stick with the road tires that come with the bike. They give you a bag for the controller, but I'm gonna mount this one on the basket. I find these hubs to be of reasonable quality for the price and they come packaged well. And next we have the disc brake and the pedal assist sensor. Out come the two brake cables, also the throttle and the grip, and then there is the controller bag. And inside the bag is the controller itself with all the leads coming out of it. Then here we have zip ties and a little cable strap along with the instructions and some new brakes I've got for it. Out of the box comes the LCD display and the little on off switch. And now let's get the tube and tire mounted onto this rim. The next step is to get that front wheel off. I've already opened up the front brakes so that the wheel can slip through them. And now let's put the new wheel on. And make sure to tighten those nuts real good. And now we've got to remove the old brake hardware from the front wheel and also from the handlebars. And now it's time to install the new hardware on the handlebars, which includes a cutoff switch that will deactivate the motor anytime you squeeze the brake levers. Your existing brake cables will fit right into the new hardware, so the installation is easy.
and I use a couple of loose zip ties to begin routing the cables along the frame of the bicycle towards the basket. Now it's time to bring out the motor controller and to get the other hardware installed on the handlebars, including the throttle assembly and the LCD computer display. Next, let's make a mounting board for the motor controller. I like to paint these mounting boards on all sides just to help give them some protection against the elements. These connectors are set up so that there's only one way to plug it in. This helps to eliminate errors during the installation process. These little yellow connecting blocks are provided to make the connections for the power from the motor controller to the motor itself. For a battery, I'm going to reutilize this one that I got from Unipack Power about a year ago. It's a 52 volt, 24 and a half amp hour battery and will provide plenty of power and range for this trike. And now we've got to re-terminate these cables with an XT90 connector. And then I cover it with some Gorilla Tape to help ruggedize and weatherproof this assembly. And now one for the other side. Let's do the same thing for this side. Make our butt connections and tape it all up. And now it's time to mount the motor controller. We're going to use the mounting board that we made earlier. The battery we are going to use was designed for the rear luggage rack of a two-wheeled bicycle. It's a little too big to fit in the basket, so we just have to cut a little space for it so it can stick out. These cordless grinders make quick work of the job and help me to smooth off any of the sharp points. The fit on the bottom is not quite level, so I'm going to go ahead and grind off that last little bar. We need to make a couple more mounting blocks for the battery tray. While those mounting plates dry, let's get started with tidying up these cables. First, we'll start with some of the cable wrap that's provided with the installation kit. Next, let's get the battery tray mounted to those mounting plates we just made.
In the end, we were not able to capture screwing this in on camera as it required several hands in order to get the job done. But as you can see, we got it done and the battery is mounted. She'll easily do 20 and even 25 on a flat with no wind. It's got so much range that I haven't even been able to figure it out because I can run all over town with this thing, up and down the hills, and when I get home it still says full. And here's the little fleet.